party time on Metabo's Plunge Traxor. KT18 LTX BL66. <clears throat> yes. Uh, so this is their brand new Plunge Traxor. Yep. It will come on a 1600mm uh, track. Yes. Which we'll talk a bit about tracks later. We will. But it's also compatible with um, standard industry ones like the Makita or the Festool or the yep. Mayfell if you're in that part of the world. Yeah, it will fit others. Which is really cool that you don't have to have a proprietary track. It is nice. Yeah. Um, so what we've done is we've, we've tested this on some pretty some pretty hard materials. We probably haven't done many much fine materials actually, have we? No. Well, I've done some yellow tongue. Yep. Um, that ain't fine. No. <laughs> no, but it's, it's not hard either. Oh, that's true. Um, yeah. But I've also had this on some 42 mil Merbu boards, um, so pretty hard yak. Yeah. That was 240 by 40. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Um, what I've found is that this is a really smooth tool to use. Yeah. Um, I really feel very... You talked about the ergonomics before of the handle. Yep. Um, being on that lean, rather than kind of more straight up like others we've used, yep. it's, the plunge motion is very nice. Yeah. Which, we get into some of the little finicky bits, you go, I don't get stuff, I want to know how much grunt has got, how deep it cuts, that's all I want to know. Yeah. There's more to it though. It is a very, very comfortable saw. You pick this up, mm. you chuck it straight on the track and run your first cut to get your track ready. And you just think something that it oozes smoothness yeah. on this saw. It's probably not the gruntiest saw, track saw around. No, there are definitely more powerful battery track saws. Yep. But um, 18 volt, it's a very, very powerful unit with the 45mm hard that I just used, the Merbu that you've cut. Yep. Um, it's still got tons of grunt. Please don't think that it lacks, but it's probably more um, smooth and precise than it is grunty. Yes. Is, that, is that fair? Yeah, that's very fair. Yeah. And that doesn't mean you can't do the hard task, it just means you have to push slower. Yep. Or do it in two passes. Yeah. Um, which is nothing wrong, that's what track's for. Yep. Track's yep. for to get that, that really precise cut. Correct. And to be fair, uh, my favourite has probably been the Makita, which is the 36 volt. Correct. So it's very hard and unfair to put it up against the twin, 36 Twin battery. Volt. Twin right. 18, yes. Yeah, that's right. Um, first couple of things here. Uh, we're going to show you a couple of close-ups at some point, maybe now, is the depth adjustment for the blade nice and easy. Anything red seems to do something, which is very similar to Bosch. It is. So is it a European thing or a German so. thing? Yeah. Uh, anything red does something. So the depth adjustment's really good, and the one thing I really like is you've got a micro adjuster on the top That's as well. That's really cool for your depth adjustment. Yeah. Yeah, so you, you, you plunge it in after you've, you've set your depth adjustment. Yep. You're, well, actually, I'd like it a mil shallow or a mil deeper than that. You don't have to play with this big adjuster. You can no. just wind this little knob to it's get It's easy to get to. So, And if you are working in really precise, uh, bespoke type materials and areas, yeah. I think that would really come into its own. It would. Didn't affect me for the stuff that I was doing with it. Didn't affect you. No. But I can see where that would come in. I've never actually seen one on a track saw before. So, I haven't. We might be mistaken, but I haven't. And yeah. we've done three or four now. Mm. Indeed. Um, now, the adjustments for your um, bevel are really easy. So front and back, loosen them off, and then swing it across. Correct. Um, one thing to note, when you want to do an undercut, it has got an undercut ability. You undo those, and then you actually flick it up a little bit, so you get your bit of bevel, and then you can push it back. There's a little knob. On the front of the knob. Oh, yeah, so you button. sort of push it back, you do your undercut. The minute that you lift it up again, that pops out, drop it, you're back to zero. That's right. Which is what you want because you always want to know that if you haven't thought about it, you're on zero. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yep. Now, um, this is variable speed. Yeah. Uh, the which... dial goes from 12 down to 1. Yep. That gets you from 2,250 up to 5,000 RPMs. Yep. Those are, of course, no load speeds. Yes. It's going to slow down in the timber a bit. Yep. True to form, me, I've used it flat knackers the whole time. Yeah. Again, I think if you're talking more bespoke materials and projects, yep. you'd probably just dial that back a little bit. For sure. So. Uh, we did note that you can actually, we haven't got one, but you can actually put a fence on this. Yes. Um, yep. there, there are slots in there for a round so it's a two bar. run rail. Yeah. Yep. And um, use it as a rip, uh, a ripping saw, so it doesn't have to go on the track. Yeah. You might have a five meter piece of timber, and you can actually just use the rip fence. I don't think I would ever use that, but obviously some people do. Either, but if we're talking a seven, seven, eight hundred dollar saw, I forget to look at the price. It's around about that. We'll annotate it. We'll put the price in for you. But for a seven, eight hundred dollar um, saw, I, I, I love that that's got that. 
Now, there is a system here for when you want to change your blade. Yep. That is, at first, annoyingly complex. Yes. But it does have some side benefits. So after we've changed blades, um, I've actually used this for Ali. It was one of the main jobs I had for cutting the tray down on the truck. Yeah. That was brilliant. Yep. I was apprehensive and I don't know why, uh, but I dropped the track, put an Ali blade on, lubed the blade up, yep. and it cut beautifully. So when you think about this, it's not just woodworking. Now, I I'm not sure if Matavo will have a heart attack or not, Yeah. but I wouldn't have thought so. It's an Ali blade. We yeah, got it beautifully. thin sheet, Ali. Yeah, yeah, and it worked fine. Would I use it as a metal saw every day? No. Mm -hmm. But it absolutely did the job, and I have no issue. All of this, and it's sort of what we come to expect from the Tarbo, it is rock solid in its build. Mm, um, it is. Now, you can't say that that's all, that's all the quality of, yeah. but you've got to have confidence in the tools in how they're built. There's no sharp edges, there's no little open bits. The thing works, it hugs tight when all the knobs are done up, yep. and it slides on the track really well to a good precision adjustment on the track, one knob, and it's a little rail in underneath that just pushes out and stops that slot on the track. It doesn't have a rear knob. So, no, no, it actually just utilises an entire like, slide, I suppose. Oh, uh, yes, I do remember seeing that. Yeah. Um, all right, can I talk about the track and the batteries? 100%. First of all, I'm holding a 5.5 amp hour battery here, and that's the battery you want on this tool because it's Matabo's most powerful battery. Yep. Doesn't have the longest run time. There's currently a 10 sitting on it, which yep. is awesome. Yes. So they've got a 10 amp hour battery in this form factor. Pretty much the same size. It is the same size, yeah. yeah. But this is not the right battery for this tool. This is a great battery to have on an impact driver or a drill or a light, yep. or something that doesn't draw too much power. This is a high power tool and it needs high power Yep. battery not just high hand power yes so 5.5 is what you want on this if you can if you can get one yep talk to your um you know metabo rep or whoever yep. you need to to understand the battery situation the best you can yep um but hey. that's my recommendation and i'm sure metabo would back me up on that yeah i think you're right in that just to quickly interject for a second while you get the track yeah just because the battery says it's 10 amp hour Bigger is not necessarily always better. Yes, it's a bigger fuel tank, yep. but the whole battery chemistry and what cells are inside, you're 100% right on that. Yep. If you're only cutting three, little, three millimeter Luan ply or something like that, or a um, an aluminium composite finishing panel or something like that, yeah. you might want to run the 10 amp because you're not needing all that grunt. Yeah. Run the 10 amp, no drummers. But understand, the five and a half is the most powerful, yep. as you said. You're plunging it in hardwood, that's what you're not going to Yeah, yep. for sure. Now this is the track of the Metabo FS160. Yep. 160 centimeters or 1.6 meters. First thing you're gonna notice if you're a woodworking fan is that that's longer than the standard types you would get from a Vestal or a Makita, yep. which are 1.4 meters. Now that is simultaneously excellent and also a little bit of a pain for me. Yep. It's excellent because a standard width sheet, you know, a standard 2.4 by 1.2 sheet, yep. If you're cross-cutting the sheet 1.2 meters wide, that 1.4 meter track yep. is not long enough. No. You want to have a bit of lead in. You, you don't have enough lead in and run over at the end. Yep. And a 1.6 gets that beautifully. So it's altogether much better to use for sheet goals. Yep. However, it's longer to store. And you might think, well, what's, who cares about 200 mil? Well, for me, and I know several tradies that I know, we keep our tracks behind the passenger seats in the back of the dual cab ute. Yep. And they fit in there just perfect 1.4. I need to find somewhere new to put my tracks in my ute, which is, you know, it's, it's not the type of tool that I want flopping around in the back of my truck. No. 
No. Oh. So you have to find a proper spot for it. I am, yeah. yeah. Americans and the like would just buy an extra size trailer, as in I don't know, an 84 metre long trailer, <laughs> to, to tow behind their 42 metre long Ford Super Duty. Yeah, yeah. Over mm. here we're a little more sensible. Indeed. And we have normal use. Probably go straight behind the uh, <laughs> behind the seats of a, a F300 or something, or yes. F250 or whatever they want to drive. Who knows? Um, so yeah, the tracks are uh, good. We would note that the rubber on the back that stops this track from sliding around. Yep. This is actually quite a shiny, yeah. slippery kind of surface Probably on the top of your on the top of your bench here. Yep. It does move around a bit more than we're used to. You have to be a little more careful. You got to make sure you have got enough downward pressure yep. as you're pushing along. Um, straight up, I would say that the Festival and Makita stuck better they do. in these situations. They've got a much wider rubber on the bottom that's yeah. you know, well over 25 mil and it's two of them. Rubber. Yep. This is a very thin, yep. round piece of rubber. It's still a good track. Yep. It obviously suits this perfect, yep. but be aware, you do need, I think, a little more downward pressure yep. versus forward with that track. Yeah, it's not going to move along your workpiece, I don't think. It might just. But it might go side still, to side. Yeah. Yep. Yep. I also just want to mention, you, you would have heard in the model number that there's a 66 there, and as per most circular saws, that represents the depth of cut. Yep. But I want to mention specifically, that's a really deep depth of cut for it's a 165 mil blade. It's ridiculous. I see, six, yeah. six and a half inch blade. Yep. Um, that's got no battery in it. Yeah, that, that blade would usually, in a handheld circular saw, only get 55. Yep. Track saws do tend to have an offset motor to get the deep cut. Yep. But still, that's a good six mil deeper than others yeah. on that sort of blade. Yep. And so even once you put that on the track, you're still going to get well over 60 mil depth of cut. For sure. Well, crack and saw, really looking forward to having this as part of our upcoming track saw comparison. Yeah, so we've got that coming up this year. The ins and outs, the grunts, the knots, the most comfortable, the most not. Yep. Um, that's coming up for sure. Old mate's got the spreadsheets happening already. Woo! Please um, hit like, hit subscribe, and let us know if you've got it, if you love it, or any questions at all. Please hit us up. Thanks very much. Cheers. Bye.